So my history with real estate has been a very interesting one. Now they say that there is an 87% failure rate for this business. To be completely honest, I should have been one of those 87 percenters on more than one occasion. Now I actually fell out of the business at least three separate times before finally getting my act together. Now let's rewind the clock back five years. You know, fresh out of college with a master's degree in marketing, I had no real prospects for a decent paying position in my hometown of San Luis Obispo, California. Now, if you've ever been to San Luis Obispo County, you know that it's a very beautiful place with absolutely no industry and no job market. Now, at this point in time, I had been recently let go from a sales position with a local auto parts distributor. Now, having no real ambition to pursue a job working for a winery or waiting tables for the rest of my life, I decided to pursue an industry that I knew had real income potential. Now, being a big second home and retirement community, you know, real estate can be a very lucrative avenue. So I decided to renew my license and team up with a local brokerage. Now, I'd saved up around 20 to 25 grand to start my business. So I purchased some headshot and launched a crummy little website and, of course, purchased some business cards. So taking a look at my headshot from my first year in the business, I look like my mom dropped me off for picture day. You know, to this day, that picture is still on my grandmother's refrigerator. Now, looking back on things, my mindset at the time seriously cracks me up. You know, I was expecting to jump into the business with $20,000, no experience, incredibly young looking, mind you, and of course, working with baby boomers who treated me like their grandchild and thought that I would just buy internet leads and crush it in the business. Let me be the one to tell you folks that I was wrong. I was so very wrong. And in three months, I was flat broke and clinging on to a $90,000 mobile home deal that I generated off of a Craigslist ad like it was the most important thing in the world. Now let's just say that the few hundred dollars that I made from that deal paid for the shiny new outfit that I wore to my next job interview. Now feeling defeated and stuck and having no real direction, and again, working a dead-end middle management job, I was in despair. I I continued at this point to make excuses as to why I could not survive in the business. You know, I blamed the small town barriers, my age, I would say that there were no quality local buyers, you know, anything that made me feel better at that moment and less defeated. Now with a job that barely paid my student loan payments each month, I could no longer afford my rent. You know, truly a real dilemma. My only option was to move in with my new girlfriend and her roommate at the time, and let's just say that I exhausted that privilege very quickly. Now, (laughs) my only option was to move back in with my family. And my grandparents have what we like to refer to as a family compound. You know, and this is a sizable property where you can find at least four generations of my family under one roof at one time. You know, truly a horrifying sight. As many of you know, living with your family in your 30s is very high up on your list of desires. You know, right next to hanging yourself. So clearly, I had hit rock bottom, and I was ready for a change. Now, in about four weeks, I had become completely disgusted with my current position as a marketing director for a local footwear distributor. So I decided to walk out one day with absolutely no game plan. You know, this time, I was going to get it right. This time, I was going to be successful in real estate, or at least I thought I was. 
So with no money and some leftover business cards, I decided to test the waters with cold calling. Now I was using some crappy script that I found online through a Google search. And after about a month or two of the most extreme rejection that I've ever experienced, I found myself yet again clinging to a meager deal that I generated from yet again another Craigslist ad. Now once that deal closed, I used the money to make a few car payments before interviewing for a sales position with a local advertising agency. Now still feeling very motivated and driven to succeed in the business, I would sneak away at the office to call on expired listings and post ads. And after about two months of zero sales, my supervisor quickly realized that clearly I had been taking advantage of the situation. In a nutshell, I used my last paycheck to purchase an iPad for my open houses. Now, feeling extremely defeated and having no real direction, I felt completely lost in my business. It was clear this next time around, I was not going to make it on sheer desire alone. I needed guidance. I needed direction. I could not be forced to earn $40,000 a year with a master's degree working for someone who I would rather kick in the throat than ever take direction from. So in light of this horrifying truth, I knew that I had to take a different approach. Now, my friend at the time and current business partner suggested that I try out Tom Ferry coaching. He said to me, I have seen you put more effort into this business than anyone else I know. You just need some direction. Now, mind you, at the time, I was flat broke, like digging through my glove box for change broke. How the hell was I supposed to afford real estate coaching? But after visiting Tom's website and being stalked by retargeting ads on Facebook, I decided to schedule a call with Tom's team. And after about an hour on the phone with a young sales rep, it finally came, the hard close. Now again, I was broke. I had a few hundred dollars in my checking account and my credit card was maxed out. And I knew it was maxed out. I continued to use the excuse that I was waiting for an escrow to close and then I would sign up for coaching. So the sales rep started to dig deeper to find out why I was being so reluctant. So why are you holding off on your future, he asked me. And I finally admitted that I was broke and I didn't want him to run my credit card because I knew it was maxed out. And after a short pause, he said to me, let's just try and run it. If it doesn't go through, then it was never meant to be. Boom, the hard close. So I said, you know what, to hell with it, go for it. <laughs> I know it won't go through anyways. And you know what happened next? The damn thing went through and I about had a heart attack. And <laughs> after a few minutes of freaking out, I finally gathered myself and I said, you know what, let's do this. At that moment, I knew that I needed to make a change, a real change. And to quote the late, great Sam Cooke, a change gonna come. Now I knew going into coaching that nothing was going to change unless I was willing to change myself. Now not just change my behaviors, but actually change my mindset. In order to be the success that I wanted, I needed to own it. I needed to believe in myself with such conviction that I would be an unstoppable force in my market. Self-visualization. See in my mind the person that I wanted to be and then become that person. You know, it's kind of funny looking back on things now. The truth that the 87% is missing is that you have to first convert yourself before you can start converting others. Now I had been bouncing around the idea of branding my business and I wanted to come up with something memorable yet unique. Now having a name like Jay Bond, clearly everyone can understand the direction that I took. Now when it comes to branding your business, you really have to embrace it and own up to it. Because at the end of the day, 
if you won't buy what you're selling, then no one else will. So I had to own up to my new brand and my identity in the business. Now, not having any real pillars of business, and since Craigslist ads were no longer fruitful, I started testing the water with some new lead gen sources. Now, from watching agents on the group Facebook page and taking direction from my coach, I started actively door knocking and cold calling. And I was kind of all over the place at first. You know, it's like teaching a child to swim. You throw them in the water, you watch them splash around a bit. So there I was, cold calling and door knocking with Yikes Flyers because I had no listings of my own and was trying to be relevant and informative in some way. And it was a lot of work at first. You know, people yelling at me on the phone, people slamming doors in my face, dogs barking at me while I'm trying to speak with someone at their doorstep. You know, tough stuff. The truth is, anything that doesn't create an immediate pleasure response tends to be shut down by the human brain. But after watching other agents in the ecosystem persevere, and with the ongoing support from my coach, I was able to push through the awkwardness and really break out of my comfort zone. And what I've come to learn over the last few years is that whatever makes you uncomfortable, keep doing more of that. Get out there every day, work hard, nurture your leads by following up, and after a while, business starts happening. And then again, and then again. You know, Vince Lombardi once said, practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. And let me be the one to tell you, you know, Vince wasn't lying. After a few little spurts of success, I was finally able to take a step back so I could really analyze my lead sources. You know, once I did so, I quickly realized that roughly 50% of my business was coming from expired listings. In light of this, I worked even harder to maximize my scripting and my objection handling skills. I enrolled a few role play partners, and before I knew it, I was role playing every morning, 8 a.m., Monday through Friday, while creating systems that were generating results that could be duplicated. You know, and as I spoke with more and more prospects, I quickly realized what was lacking in my market and where most agents were falling short. Now, my goal was to identify opportunities as much as possible before the listing appointment. You know, this would really help me tailor my presentation to the needs of the client and, of course, create a clearly identifiable value proposition and establish a large degree of separation between myself and my competition. Now, I was starting to make a few deals happen here and there while at the same time learning the art of consistency. Now, let's fast forward one year. You know, I reached a point where my sweat equity was really starting to pay off. So what did I do next? I started writing checks. I was finally able to afford different prospecting systems so I could really diversify my business. Direct mail, Facebook ads, a better CRM, pay-per-click ads, retargeting ads. You know, this is when I started farming. I was able to convert my first listing out of my farm off of an expired listing. And it was a lot of work on this one. I was competing with agents who lived in my farm and had been operating there for at least 20 years. And I had to fight tooth and nail for that listing. And after about a week of silence, I finally got the call one night on my way home from the office. They decided to list with me based on my marketing plan. Now the last agent to have the listing had the home on the market for 74 days with no offers. And I'm proud to say that I was able to secure a full price cash offer in just 10 days of being on the market. <clears throat> Thank you. The long story short, I had won long-term friends and lifetime advocates from that one transaction. Now taking a look at the Wazilla review generated from that deal, my wife hung up on Jay four times before we hired him. Literally the best review ever. 
Now, I was starting to build a track record as an agent who could get homes sold where others could not. So what did I do at this point? I started leveraging that track record by sending out social proof postcards, shooting social proof videos, posting those videos on social media, and emailing those videos to my database. Now, instead of just prospecting each day, people were starting to seek me out for my services. A real game changer. Now, I want to be completely honest with everyone. The proof is in the pudding. The dollars are in the follow-up. Follow-up is truly the key to success in this business. Now, most agents will fall short after a few months of calling on a prospect, just due to the massive amounts of rejection and their overall lack of discipline. The truth is, once you call on a prospect every month for six months, you really start to build a solid rapport with the prospect. By that time, all the other noise and distraction from competitors has really begun to die down. You get to know them on a more personal level, and they start to trust you. You almost reach a point where they're glad that you called so you can discuss the market with them. Hello, Bob. Hey, this is Jay Bond. You know, I just wanted to call and check in with you. Did you know that your neighbor's house down the street just sold for $800,000? How much do you think your home would sell for? You know, I've had this process go on for a year, two years, sometimes almost three years before finally getting a sit-down meeting. On average, we've noticed a 12 to 24 month conversion ratio for most expired listing leads. Now, I realize that I could have taken a more technical approach with this presentation versus the storytelling route. And I, I wanna be the one to tell you all today that there are plenty of ways to prospect for new business, plenty of tools and services designed to help you find these leads. But it's up to you to take the first step and leverage these systems by actually doing the work. Now, I'm not talking about doing it occasionally. I'm talking about doing it hardcore every day. Through consistency, you will make progress. Cold call, door knock, call your sphere, role play. Do it passionately and do it consistently. You know, agents are always asking me on Facebook or in the office, you know, what is the secret sauce to killer conversion? And they always seem disappointed with the answer that I give them. Let me be the one to tell you, there is no magical script, no objection handler, no better CRM that's going to make business happen for you. So what does work then? Having a strong brand identity, having a clear message, creating a degree of separation between yourself and your competition, and building a track record on consistency are the best ways to convert more leads and generate more business for yourself. Once you have a strong brand identity, the brand itself can start generating business. Break out of your comfort zone. Whatever makes you uncomfortable, do 110% more of that. But always remember, you were never defeated until you defeat yourself. Thank you.